It's a pleasure to, for me to welcome you on behalf of the Marius Foundation to this event. I am Valentina Pico. I'm head of clinical research and also head of public health initiatives and educational programs. And so we have this meeting, um, revolving meeting that was being carried since 2008 uh, at the Marius Foundation. And um, we keep it moving through, through many years. And um, at some point, we have the pandemic, we carry some online, uh, you know, exchanges. But this is the first time that actually experts are meeting again uh, after the pandemic on this meeting at least. And uh, I think that this is a, it's a very n n nice and beautiful occasion uh, for everyone to get gathered again and look at the, at the, you know, the vaccine hesitancy or confidence or trust or access, whatever you name it, because it's so hard, the semantics when it comes down to vaccine hesitancy and get, uh, you know, experts to, to discuss about it and, and to have you all here. So that is, that is great. Um, I'd like to thank the scientific committee because we have a committee that supports us in, in making this program. And one of the members are here with Catherine. Hernandez, who supported us a lot in, in the making of this program. I'd like to thank her for that. Some of the people have not arrived today, but I am. Um, we have a, a nice crowd of about I think 35 people here today with us. So I just want to mention a few words about the Marys Foundation. The Marys Foundation is a, is a family foundation that was uh, created in 1967 uh, by um, uh, Charles Merlieu who was father of Louis Pasteur. And so that brings us back into public health and, and vaccine developments. And that's what the roots of Fondation Mario is always linked to, 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 to public health and, and, and global health in general. Um, we are 50, almost over 50 years of old and we have a official uh, public interest status. So basically we are uh, a non-lucrative family foundation. Um, we, our mission is to fight infectious diseases uh, um, around the globe and particularly in vulnerable populations. And we do that in many different ways. We um, have uh, conducted projects in over uh, 20 countries. We have a local offices and, uh, um, and 19 applied research units that work with us throughout the, the world globe in order to carry the programs that we, we carry out from the CMRU. We have uh, four, four axes of um, intervention. One is increasing populations' access to diagnosis, and we do that by strengthening laboratories and also by identifying the best uh, diagnostic techniques of, of avail uh, diagnostic techniques that are accessible in the contextual as, uh, situations of given countries um, to get access to diagnosis, enhancing local applied research capabilities. Uh, we also do that with numerous research projects and also public health uh, operational applied research projects where li literally the projects are intending to understand better what are the, um, the responses that we need to give to this given populations in terms of uh, access to, to, um, to health. Improving conditions to for mother and children and also encouraging knowledge sharing uh, through various educational programs and public health initiatives. And we are in one of them uh, here uh, today. Okay, so so here are roots. Where are we? Our footprint. Our four objectives. Uh, why this conference is part of our objectives in in terms of uh, knowledge sharing, but activities of the strength for strengthening clinical laboratory systems. So we set in infrastructures and equipment and computerized systems for quality clinical biology. Strengthening the expertise needed for diagnostic testing in several countries, improving the management of and efficiency of clinical biology laboratories. We assist also local health authorities in building diagnostic capacity. Uh, in fostering public health research capacities, we are basically working in specific uh, thematics in, in terms of the research agenda. One is antimicrobial resistance. By the way, we have a course on antimicrobial resistance that is starting on, on Monday, next Monday, for seven days. We work on tuberculosis, acute respiratory infections, enteric infections, and also in the surveillance of emerging pathogens. I will not go into the details of, of the different projects. Obviously, we can, we, we can go to our website, but this is the, the footprint on the network of 18 Sentinel, uh, Sentinel laboratories in which we work around the globe. 
So you see that we try to um, to mainly address um, areas in the world where uh, we call the low middle income countries or refugee, also refugee populations, uh, where they might be located. And uh, so that's that's where we we are building uh, our capacities and structural capacities with uh, local authorities. Improving conditions on, for mother and children. So we have enabling access to healthcare for refugees, displaced and vulnerable populations, supporting education and socioeconomical development so that, uh, you know, we construct schools, health education programs uh, in the field for, for uh, populations in displacement, provide uh, programs of microcredit and income generating activities and addressing basic needs, uh, emergency, em emergency food aid, house construction, provision of medicines, and other type of uh, activities that are basically coming into crisis settings. Uh, we responded to, for example, the, um, the Ukrainian situation, but also we respond particularly to situations uh, uh, in Lebanon when there were the displacement of Syria, Syrian population. So we try to be there where our actions can make sense and uh, and uh, encourage those actions uh, and relieve people from from suffering. Um, encouraging knowledge sharing, so we have um, numerous programs um, that five courses. Probably you know ADVAC, you know diagnostic course. We have an epidemiological course. We also have a course on on uh, antimicrobial resistance, like I just mentioned. We reaches out about two thousand five hundred participants a year not only here in Le Pensier, but also around the globe, where we're trying to be present and uh, we convene uh, experts like you to share uh, uh, experiences and, and ideas and obviously to try to foster and disseminate even further this information to people that are, that are coming. We also promote the um, fellowships, basically people from low income in countries that are unable to come and we try to promote their participation in these programs. So there are several programs a year with a, uh, that are being uh, revolving and being carried continuously. And, um, and, so we, and, and based on those programs, we try to continue fostering uh, human capacity building in, in, in the different countries that we work with and also on particular diseases. For example, we, we are particularly uh, active in uh, task forces like cholera, on rabies, on pneumonia, on dengue as well, and other task forces in which Fundación Meriut is a uh, part of. So just uh, showing you a little bit of uh, the you know landscaping, we've been working with these programs for several years. So those programs keep revolving depending on the section and the area of the world where we carry in these programs uh, to create momentum, continue knowledge sharing and, and sharing uh, ideas. This is the latest uh, publication that came from the last vaccine acceptance meeting that was carried here. Yeah. And um, um, we also promote evidently other types of dissemination of the information that we, we shared through the, these different programs. So, in a nutshell, Fundación Meriu is uh, for obvious intervention, 25 countries where we work, about 170 employees in 15 countries, 70 laboratories uh, that are, um, you know, working uh, on, on diagnosis, but also on research capacity building. Um, we also participate in structural development of those laboratories by renovating a number of laboratories at the country level either a regional, but also a capital, but also a particularly regional, um, several collaborative programs and uh, several com scientific conferences. So I am um, I just um, glad to, to welcome you all today to have, a, have an interesting program. I think that the program brings the dimension of um, vaccine hesitancy, or trust or confidence within the post-pandemic um, world. And I think many of you as experts know better than I do uh, that many things have changed since, since COVID-19. And also the new tools and new dimensions of, the, of, of how vaccine hesitancy with the AI um, can link uh, today uh, in order to, in this arena, how this is touching uh, several aspects of it. So I, I, I think that the program will be interesting and I, we thank you so much for being here. Um, with that said, I am happy to present our keynote speaker.